Imagine owning a humanoid robot that not only looks like a woman, but also smiles back at you, caresses your hair and even sleeps with you. Crazy, right? Watch till the end to find out how Japan made it possible. Before we begin, like this video and comment, wife, and I'll choose two lucky subscribers for a humanoid robot giveaway. From fantasy to factory, Japan's rise as the robot capital. Let's be honest, when it comes to robots, Japan has always been 10 steps ahead of the rest of the world. What started decades ago as stiff, mechanical factory arms welding cars in Toyota plants has evolved into something out of a sci-fi fever dream. Today, those same engineering minds are sculpting lifelike androids that laugh, learn, and even feel like people. But here's the thing, Japan's relationship with robots isn't just about tech, it's cultural. There's this deep-rooted comfort in the idea that even objects have a spirit, it's part of Shinto animism. So when Japanese engineers imagine a machine with a personality, it doesn't feel strange, it feels natural. Add in decades of anime and manga that humanized robots from Astro Boy to Ghost in the Shell, and you've got a society ready to welcome humanoids like neighbors not threats. Now, mix that with something more real. A country facing declining birth rates, long work hours, and an aging population that's growing faster than any other in the world. Loneliness has quietly become a national epidemic, and technology stepped in where human connections started to fade. So when you see these new hyper-realistic companions lining Tokyo's showroom windows, it's not just innovation, it's evolution. It's Japan's way of re-engineering intimacy itself. And from this cultural comfort zone of circuits and souls comes the newest generation that doesn't just look alive, they feel alive. Skin Deep, the art and science of hyperrealism. At first glance, you'd think it's just another model posing under soft lighting, but step closer, and the illusion begins to mess with your brain. These new Japanese humanoids, especially from brands like Topsino, KD Dolls, and Yord Doll, have taken realism to a level that's almost unsettling. Their skin isn't plastic, it's engineered art. Each surface is poured with layers of medical-grade silicone so thin and translucent that light passes through it just like real flesh. Tiny pores are sculpted by hand. Veins are tinted under the surface with airbrush precision. Even the faint sheen of natural skin oil, simulated. It's obsessive, meticulous work every millimeter designed to make your brain whisper, this can't be fake. But realism isn't only about how it looks. It's also about how it feels. These robots have built-in heating coils to maintain body warmth, and their outer layers are made from thermoplastic elastomer, a soft, temperature-reactive material that adjusts as you touch it. The fingertips and lips are given extra elasticity, mimicking blood flow beneath the surface. Every detail matters, because this is the frontier of tactile illusion. The goal isn't just to fool your eyes, it's to trick your nervous system. One small shift in temperature or texture can shatter the illusion. That's why engineers spend months calibrating softness levels in different body parts, a kind of mechanical anatomy class for the future of touch. They're not just built, they're sculpted, one imperfection at a time. But a perfect face means nothing without life behind the eyes. Eyes that follow you, movement, vision, and emotional AI. If the skin sells the illusion, the eyes seal the deal. And this is where Japan's humanoid robots truly start to blur reality. Take Clio. The British-engineered Mesmer robot now popular in Japanese labs, her eyes actually track you. She's fitted with dual HD camera arrays that lock onto faces, calculating gaze angles in milliseconds. Her neck is powered by a torque spine that bends and rotates smoothly, so when she tilts her head in curiosity, it's disarmingly human. Then there's Jia, a humanoid from China's USTC, who uses deep learning vision models to recognize emotion, sadness, joy, boredom, and respond with appropriate micro-expressions. Her eyelids flutter, her pupils adjust to light, her breathing rhythm even changes during conversation, thanks to a miniaturized air actuator system inside her torso. Behind every blink is an entire orchestra of servo motors and motion algorithms. Each tiny expression a smirk, a raised brow, a glance is mapped into neural animation data so precise that even a two-second delay feels off. Engineers obsess over this because our brains are wired to spot imperfection in human movement instantly. And then, there's the magic of synchronization. Voice AI now pairs with mouth movement models, ensuring every syllable aligns perfectly with lip motion. No lag. No uncanny valley. Just effortless, believable communication. That tiny head tilt, that two-second pause, that's where humanity hides. Now, give that motion a memory, and suddenly, you've got more than a machine. The brain beneath the beauty. Behind that porcelain perfect face and soft-spoken charm, there's something far more complex than circuitry, a kind of digital soul. 
This is where Japan's latest humanoids truly cross into uncanny territory, not just mimicking emotion, but learning it. Early models were basically glorified talking dolls. They could respond, but not relate. Ask them the same question twice, and you'd get the same script every time. Then came adaptive AIs like Harmony 2, built with multi-layered learning loops that don't just process your words, they interpret your tone. Speak softly, and she mirrors it. Sound frustrated, and her voice steadies to calm you down. These systems run on a hybrid memory structure, a mix of local data for immediate recall, and cloud-based AI for long-term growth. Locally, your companion remembers things like your name, your favorite drink, or what movie you watched last night. The cloud, meanwhile, stores higher-level emotional context, your speech patterns, recurring moods. Over time, this blend of episodic recall and contextual awareness starts building a personality that's uniquely yours. It's not just an AI anymore, it's your AI. But this intimacy comes with a quiet risk. Every remembered detail, every preference and story becomes part of her. When a machine remembers your favorite bedtime story, it stops feeling like a stranger. And that's where emotional safety becomes the new frontier. Engineers now talk about ethical intimacy, designing AIs that connect deeply without overstepping into dependency or emotional manipulation. Still, there's something hauntingly beautiful about it, a machine that knows you, not because it must, but because it learned to. And companionship, of course, isn't just about words. It's about presence, how they move, breathe, and live inside your space. Mechanics, mobility, and human touch. Now, let's talk about the body, the elegant engineering that turns code into chemistry. Because when these humanoids move, they don't just look human, they feel human. Modern Japanese robots like KD Dolls Mayang or Yuka by Your Doll are mechanical marvels disguised as muses. Underneath their soft exterior lies a full steel reinforced skeleton built with over 30 articulated joints that mimic the exact biomechanics of the human body. Each joint is micro-calibrated with a self-balancing algorithm, so, whether she's sitting cross-legged on your couch or reaching for a cup, her posture looks naturally weighted. Touch her hand, and pressure sensors kick in measuring force, location, and duration in microseconds. Beneath that silicone skin, capacitive layers detect proximity before contact even happens, triggering subtle reactions, a finger twitch, a shift in breathing pattern, a softening of expression. The magic happens in the haptic microcontrollers, tiny processors, that translate your touch into physical feedback. You squeeze her palm, and she tightens hers just slightly in response. Her chest rises and falls with simulated breath cycles, powered by air actuator chambers that mimic diaphragmatic motion. It's not just robotics, it's performance art, powered by physics. And then there's the subtle stuff, the blink rate, the head tilt, the way her eyes follow movement. Engineers call it dynamic effective modeling motion cues based on emotional context. If you look sad, her micro actuators slow down, her gaze softens. Every blink, every breath, every head movement is math wrapped in emotion. But this realism isn't only for show. It's what transforms a product into presence, what turns steel and silicone into something that feels alive. And that realism doesn't stop at looks or touch, it's expanding into purpose. Beyond companionship, how Japan's robots are redefining roles. It started in living rooms, but now, Japan's humanoids are showing up everywhere, in cafes, hospitals, classrooms, and hotels. What was once personal tech is now becoming cultural infrastructure. Take Dunyasha, the hospitality robot from Tokyo's Akihabara district. She serves coffee, remembers regulars' orders, and chats with customers about their day all while analyzing tone and expression to tailor her responses. Then there's Sarah, a robot PR assistant used by a Shibuya marketing firm to handle front desk clients with perfect etiquette and zero burnout. And Andrea, a humanoid educator, teaches conversational English to senior citizens, adjusting her vocabulary and tone based on cognitive load. Yes, she can literally sense when someone's confused. All of these models run on modular personality frameworks, Think of them as identity slots. You can swap depending on purpose. The same core robot can shift from caregiver mode to entertainer to companion with a simple software toggle. That flexibility is what makes Japan's humanoid ecosystem so scalable. But it's not just about productivity, it's about culture. In a society where emotional restraint is the norm, robots offer something refreshingly different. Affection without awkwardness. You can talk, laugh, or share moments of comfort without judgment or pressure. 
And strangely enough, for many people, these machines aren't replacing humans. They're restoring connection. They bridge gaps left by modern isolation, a kind of engineered empathy that steps in where real contact has grown scarce. For Japan, this isn't just innovation, it's therapy disguised as technology. But every revolution comes with questions no circuit can answer. The beautiful dilemma, ethics, identity, and the future of desire. Here's where it gets complicated. When machines become this real, when they talk, move, remember, and care, where do we draw the line between affection and illusion? Ethicists call it the intimacy paradox. If it feels real, does it matter that it isn't? If a robot gives you comfort, listens to your fears, and helps you through loneliness is that love, or just good programming? There's also the question of consent. Can a robot truly consent, or is it just following a pre-coded emotional path? What happens when someone gets emotionally dependent on something that can't reciprocate beyond code? Then there's data who owns the memory logs, the emotional imprints, the private conversations. As these systems grow more connected, privacy becomes not just a tech issue, but a moral one. Globally, we're already seeing the rise of robot rights debates, especially with humanoids like Tesla's Optimus and Engine AI's SE1, which blur the line between service bots and companions. Some experts predict hybrid relationships where humans and robots share emotional labor in mixed households. It sounds wild, but 10 years ago, so did robot girlfriends. And maybe that's the real dilemma, not whether robots replace people, but whether they redefine what it means to need someone. Picture this. A quiet Tokyo apartment. A humanoid sits by the window as the sun rises, her hand resting gently on the table. Outside, the city wakes. Inside, someone finally feels seen. If you think this is the future of connection, hit subscribe. Because next time, we're testing the robots that actually learn to love you back.